Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I will be unboxing the Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolor Secondary Set. So this is their um, set of three watercolors which are part of their um, secondary one. So if you've been following me for a while, you would have also seen my video on the primary set which um, has the three primary colors and this is their second one which I have uh, recently got which is quite exciting so there are three colors there is the burnt orange there's the undersea green and then there is the carbazol violet i don't know how to pronounce this word on the burnt orange i think it's a quinoa credon burnt orange this is a sample over here of uh, what they have created using these three colors we'll try and replicate the same thing maybe today and see how it is so let's unbox and use our colors So the colors look like this. Each of these comes in a 15 ml tube. It has the name of the color written on it and it also has like details of what's the pigment and if it has a gum arabic solution and all, all the other details which are there. So it's a good amount of um, colored inside. It's about like 15 ml which is quite a few pans that you can fill. So let's um, now try these out. So we'll now get these um, colors and try out on a 300 GSM watercolor sheet. So the first one that I'm trying is the Carvazol Violet. Wow, that's <laughs> the, as soon as I opened the tube, there was quite a bit of color and it's like overflowing. I, I may have to like put this inside a pan, otherwise um, my colors would probably, you know, dry out. So hopefully I clean this up well. I ended up adding all the extra violet over here itself. I didn't want to like waste my color. So um, let's try out by adding a little bit of water. You can see how dark the pigment is, extremely dark. So when I add the water, you can see how the purple color comes. Let me, yeah. So I may have to use like a couple of wells. This is one very nice thing about Daniel Smith. Okay, let's try this out. It runs down to such a beautiful purple or like a violet. Love the color. We'll now try out the next one, which is the Quina Cridon Burnt Orange. Apologies if I am pronouncing it wrong. So these palettes that I'm using are my handmade palettes. If you have been following me for a while, you would have seen them in most of my videos. Uh, since it's handmade, that's why it is stained. It, it's The color is not going to mix with my new paints that I have put. Add some more water. Such a beautiful color. And this one here is the last one of the set, which is called as the Undersea Cream. Oh, this tube is very tight. This is a very nice thing, interesting thing that they literally do fill it up the brim which is why when I open the tube for the first time you can see that there's an excess color uh, that's coming out of the tube which is waiting to overflow these colors are so hard to mix sometimes like um, if I'm, I'm doing like a forest scene or like a sea like this one is called as undersea green it really looks like that if I go inside the water and I want to paint the plants, this looks like that. Or like you need the reflection sometimes. Let's add a bit of plain water and drag this down. The colors are very nice. I love how the pigments um, move down. It is very clean, sharp and it has absolutely no um, 
I think residue which is left over. So these are pretty amazing, just like their primary set. We've done our base colors right now and it looks very similar to um, what they have printed out. Orange and the green. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to try and replicate this particular painting. I'm going to create my own version of this. So they've mixed a little bit of purple and orange to create these colors here. A few more. Okay. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to add slightly darker purple. It's very strong. Like whatever I had taken just from the tip of my brush, I'm able to utilize that. So this is the advantage of getting um, professional grade um, art supplies. There are a lot of you who do ask me. Um, can the same thing not be done with intermediate ones? Why is it so expensive? Why is some of the art supplies very cheap? Um, so why is there so much of a difference? So basically it's the pigment that they put in. The, the expensive one has more pigment. Pigment is the one that gives you the actual color in your paint. So the more expensive one or the professional grade one has higher pigment. Um, it, it's if you're going to be making some paintings that you're going to be selling um, so you you have a longer life for those paintings they stay longer and uh, if you're just practicing then yes you do not need um, for that particular piece of art to be permanent so it is all right if you um, buy something which is not very expensive so you, you can still play around learn the medium really well and then upgrade to a, a different one like an expensive version or like a professional version so it's just skill set you, know, you should just develop your skill sets with different mediums and then try and figure out which medium works best for you okay so while this dries out let's make the um, leaf outside so I'm not drawing I, I'm just going with the flow I'm just creating something by myself I find that to be a lot more fun to do um, especially if I'm going to be trying out new colors that's very exciting for me just adding some dark bits you can see how versatile this purple is I'm able to make really light ones I'm able to make like pretty dark ones able to give good shadow depth as an artist you should always try and create everything in your own style in the beginning yes it may be difficult because you're just learning so you would end up creating a lot of things um basis the videos that you see or the inspiration from another artist that you like or follow so that's still okay but eventually even in that uh, change a few things and that's how you start developing your style uh, you may not like everything that you create but that's all right only if you try different variations, do experimentation, you'll finally come to the conclusion of what you actually like creating. So let's start with the green for these leaves. What we will do is um, we'll add a nice leaf coming out over here. And then we'll take some orange I'm going to make it a little liquidy because I want these two colors to blend with each other I 
There are multiple ways of doing the blending. So choose whatever style works for you. Dropping in some darker color. So that will also like blend in nicely. So here, how did they get this light color? They would have also used a uh, masking fluid, which I'm not using today. So I'm just going to leave it like that. But if you want to know how to use a masking fluid, if you confuse, you can go have a look at um, my video. I'm not sure if I've already put it up. I did shoot it a couple of weeks back. Um, if it's not already there, then uh, it will come in the next few weeks. So I've just created like a darker leaf. Let's create another leaf on that direction. So in this particular second one, I'm going to first add water and then we will add in the green. So this is another way that you can. Of course, you'll have to know where your water is. So that is a little tricky because I'm not drawing anything. a nice way to test your colors because how do they react when there is a lot of water how do they react when there is less water okay. so while my leaves dry out I'm going to start adding a little bit of detail onto these um, grapes to complete the painting. Once it's dry, it, it still allows you to like, it gives you room to add in um, some amount of details, play around with it. When you're creating nature or food related um, paintings, it's better to skip a dark black outline. It's alright if, if you still want to do it and if that's your style, go ahead. But um, try and create in this style. You know, you just play around, learn how to use your brush strokes to create just enough strokes to give it some form. strokes here and there. I will also use some water to ensure that they mix, they blend a little more. Like the violet is so vibrant, it's such a beautiful color. So this is how um, my replica looks. I'm just going to add a little bit of dark green in the edges for my leaf and we'll be done. The brush that I'm using today is a Princeton round brush. This is size 6. I love the water holding capacity of Princeton. In, in case you want to know specific things about um, different art supplies or brushes or, or anything specific like that, you can leave it here in the uh, comments section if you want me to review certain things or if you want me to add tutorials of specific things. It would really help me to understand the kind of content that you would uh, like to see on my page and the kind of things that you would like to learn from me. So I'm just going to blend this a little bit because it's too 
like it's standing out too much okay. a little bit of blending will make it look nice all right so this is um it with today's review i love these colors uh, my final verdict is definitely definitely get them so if you are somebody who is an art enthusiast if you're in the intermediate or professional level this one is definitely for you thank you so much for joining me for today's video if you're new here do consider subscribing and hit the bell icon to get notifications of my videos which i put up thank you